We're back with the Gospel View. We're going to be talking about the Jerry Sadusky case right now. And Jerry Sadusky is the defensive coordinator at Penn State University. And right now there's a big scandal going on that involves Jerry Sadusky, Penn State University, as well as Joe Paterno and other officials at the school not reporting a sexual molestation case that they should have reported years ago. As a mother myself with a 12-year-old who's actually involved in sports, this is a very touchy issue uh, for me. And this is just shocking to me that this can happen and actually no one says anything. You have people actually witness this and it's just now coming out now. And it's, this is very crazy. It's, I get angry because children they cannot always speak for themselves. And these kids were underprivileged children. And you know what, Chris? If you ask the question you haven't asked yet, but if you think this man did it, I think he did. I looked at everything, <laughs> and I think he did this to yeah, these kids. And that makes me question. angry. I'm, I'm so angry. Like, I'm seriously. I'm in disbelief. I'm in disbelief. I don't understand how this took this long and I need answers. I'm, I'm confused on because there's multiple cases. Which case sparked this particular revelation this year? Mm -hmm. What case was it from? Was it from the 94 case? Was it from because it's almost a two year uh, reoccurrence almost every two years. It was something else. Either it was overlooked or it was filed. I only think it was three cases that were actually filed in the year that it happened. Now Everything let me else give y'all a picture. Let me give y'all a picture. Thank you, please. One of the assistant coaches comes in at the time. He was a uh, had a different. Uh, he was like one of the officials, but he wasn't actually right. a assistant coach at the time. He worked himself up to being an assistant coach now. Mm -hmm. But he walked into the locker room. He hears showers running. And as he hears showers running, he goes in to see why the showers are running because no players were supposed to be in the showers at that time. He goes in the shower and he sees a young 10-year-old boy straddled in spread eagle with his hands on a shower wall and Jerry Sadusky in there with the shower, in the shower with him. And then he doesn't go to the cops. He goes to the officials and tells Coach Joe Paterno and tells one other, other, uh, one other school official that this went on and nobody as far as a law in law enforcement gets wind of this mm -hmm. now something's wrong there that's right? something's wrong yes he, after he contacted his head which i would have done to of course go to your head then you're going to go to the cops and it would have been more than just the cops taking care of him like a grown man trying to mess with a child in the shower grown men should have been whooping some some grown <laughs> man, if you understand what I'm saying, to protect a child. That is sickening, and it should have been taken care of then. Well, it just speaks to how immune governmental entities and schools are yes. oh, yes. when it comes to the law. It's almost impossible to even carry out a suit. Mm -hmm. And at that point, when the head was addressed or whoever was addressed, um, we all know that protocol wasn't taken because exactly. of the fact that it's a school. And it's mm -hmm. a governmental entity, and you're almost gonna lose out every time. That's when it. You're dealing with it's bureaucracy. Said. It's bureaucracy, and and when you don't have money, and that's what happens with issues with people. Sometimes I think it was lower income people Low income. when they can't fight for themselves. A lot of times they don't have the money to fight, and and these people take advantage of these children. And they just so my God. And it's Ooh. almost like if you don't have any money, then you don't have a voice, and and, and that in turn. Uh, I mean, that happens all the time. When you have low-income families um, that need help and they find someone that's actually giving them help, then they don't want to speak out about the things that the person does to them, which I don't think that that's fair either. Mm -hmm. You know, and that, uh, that happens. I mean, these cases happen all the time, and, and most of the time there are low-income or low-budget families that this happened to. Coach Joe Paterno, he is the one that got fired because of this along with Jerry Sadusky. Mm -hmm. Do you think that Joe Paterno should have gotten fired being the head coach and not just just you know going to what he had to do and going to his officials? Do you think that he should have went above and beyond? And should yes. this affect his legacy? What did Joe yes. Paterno know? I don't, I don't know what he knew. I, that part I, I did not find or research. I don't know what he knew. If he knew something about it, Yes, because he, he, he did know. Yes. He did know I that it was a report made. Yes. It was a report yes. made. They reported it, but like what what Chris was speaking of, as far as protocol is concerned, because I believe that's even why Curly and Schultz are being uh, investigated right. on right now, because those were two of the main men that went back and told uh, them that these allegations either weren't true or either it was misconstrued and they just needed to, you know, redirect the information, and they took on that responsibility of changing the entire scenario, um, but. 
What I feel is that Joe Paterno should not have been fired. That's just me. I think that after Joe did his job, Joe uh, reported, followed the horrible protocol that they had in place. That was all that he could do. If he if he chose, you know, to speak out, um, you know, I, I I I'm not I'm not sure about about how everyone else feels, um, but I, I don't think I don't think Joe should have lost his job. I think Joe did well, his job. I think, it, I think that I think Joe should have lost his job. I, and I reason, agree. I yeah. think he should have lost his job if he knew anything about it. Meaning it and saying that he followed the protocol, but still, what about these little boys that don't have a voice? I, I think Joe should have. I think Joe should have lost his job, but I think he should have retired first. And they gave him the option. They said, "Hey, Joe, you have the chance to go out and retire," year, right. and he did not. And then, a quarter, you know, then why they, didn't he? Did they say why? He he felt that he shouldn't have to. That he did nothing wrong, other than he did what he had, was he required to by the NCAA, exactly. which is reported to the reported. school officials. And the school reported, officials didn't go any further. So and the I do, school I, people need to be. That's and what and I it's think a lot of other be. people that need to be brought on the fire that's not being brought on the fire mm -hmm. right now. And I totally agree about that. So they need to do some more investigating because there's some other people that knew about this. They're not the only people that knew about this. My problem is, is that, you know, Joe Joe is the coach and Joe did have some kind of clout as far as, you know, who's responsible for doing this. But at this particular time that all this stuff was going on, Sandusky was a volunteer. Mm -hmm. So whoever wrote the book on how much access to that school uh, Sandusky could have, that's who's responsible mm -hmm. because, you know, it's only much that a coach can really do as far as the, the property, the campus, mm -hmm. keys, and all that kind of stuff. He was really not um, staffed. Staff. Staff. Okay. He okay. was a volunteer. Right. He was just right. coming in. He still had all access to all offices, to the showers, to all the rooms, to everything extra. And then he was able to bring, because he had his, you know, um, little arrangement with the kids and, all, and everyone from Second Mile, this he was able to bring much. them in. And, you know, sort of create a scenario to where he wouldn't really be held responsible for answering why are you in this room at this time Chad, of night. So, Chad, you my it, you thing is, who's over the volunteers? Okay, so if he's a volunteer, then the protocol is, who's in charge of this volunteer? And why does this volunteer have all because this access there's and no nobody? Coaches, there's no coaches worried about what organization is coming to the game. They're not, they don't have a list and say, okay, well, is this... Uh, is this community organization here? And do they have their kids? And did they get off the bus on time? They're not worried about that. He's the he's the coach. He's worried about kick the fo the football down the field. It's who who's who's working behind the scenes. Who was who's supposed to be managing those kids and everybody that was coming in there? So How did those kids get in the shower? Exactly. And what happened to the background check? Because this guy yeah. already had a pattern from '94. And how did he, he even got to? Things. How did he slip through the cracks to get? To, to get to this school, to even be in charge of these so kids. You guys think that child laws before. need to be raised for either coaches and teachers? Yes. If, if somebody has something on their record that is a sexual assault, yes. offense, they, they should not be working with children. They do not think that's a little harsh or what? No, no I don't. As I an don't. educator, I can tell you that there are people praying, P-R-E-Y, on your children. Yes. Right. I worked with a male teacher at one point, and he told me in a teacher's lounge, if so-and-so, talking about a male student, high school, if so-and-so was older, he would be my man. Oh, he no. had a man crush on oh, a student. Students. What? And these kids are going around under the leadership, under the influence, under the impact of these type of people while parents are at home totally unknowing. Not even knowing what's totally going on. Oblivious. We're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, I want to talk a little bit more about that. All right, we're back with the Gospel View. I want to talk about Jerry Sadusky's second mile charity uh, that he actually helped underprivileged youth and, and provided s such great things to the youth. And on the outskirts of everything, it looked like it was a good opportunity for kids to go to the second mile. Um, but now that we know that this is all taking place, should more uh, backgrounds be you know, backgrounds Definitely. be checked. Definitely. Definitely. But I know the protocol here in Houston, if you are, uh, if you want to volunteer at a school or anything, they have to do a full extensive background check mm -hmm. and have to have your driver license and everything on file in order to do any volunteering at a school, any field trips, even a parent, if, if a parent, you know, the, the children are going on a field trip and if a parent fills out a form to go, they have to do an extensive background check before that parent can attend that field trip with those children. Mm -hmm. now, I knew, do know that we have that protocol here in Houston. I cannot speak for any other cities or any other states. What, what organization is responsible for doing investigation on Second Mile? 
And why wasn't that investigation done in 2000, if not 2002, when three other cases, not on the, not on the college premises, in that second mile organization, there were already three cases of Sandusky and an eight-year-old, a 10-year-old, a 13-year-old um, with sexual, you know, it's because I think it's because they're low income and because, okay, he is a foot he's in football, he's with Penn State, everybody knows his That's name. True. This and isn't always so and then his parents are looking like, you know, if my kid goes to that program. We see that going on in the Catholic diocese where they cover for each other with the little mm -hmm. boys. Forever. We've seen it in the yes. Baptist where Bishop Eddie Long is supposedly accused. He hasn't been um, you know, convicted of anything, but he did settle in the case. And so, do you think that it's a that? Of course, it's a problem. But do you think that it has to deal with the money or wealth of these individuals, or is this going on everywhere? And we just don't have a shine a light on it until it's a big enough political or economical figure. Well, you say just the Catholic Church, for instance, the priests. They may not have money, but the priest has power. Yes. So it's about the power. It's yeah. about okay, like we said, football. Football head coach. Penn State, bam, power. power. You got uh, the head priest. The priest um, that, that people are under him, you know, they're submitted to this priest. So we can't tell because this priest did that. But instead of somebody coming out there afraid or they don't have enough clout behind them to push them forth, you know. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that that is people that are hiding things right now, you need to come out yes. and tell the truth. Now, that's what the, the scripture said in Isaiah 29. Of course, Speaking. it was in a different aspect but of course in Colossians 3 and that was you know what is done in the dark will we'll eventually be yes. revealed in yeah. the light and that God will make sure that you understand that it's not you who has the total understanding of the whole scope in the picture but he's the one that will expose you so that you know that he is all knowing yes he yes. is all knowing and I believe that this is this Sandusky trial is not only um, something that shows how it's so easy based on any circumstance, it could be money, power, influence, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. It's so easy for us as human beings to compromise if we really don't have a very, very strong belief and faith and moral value. Mm -hmm. It's so That's easy good. for us now, to compromise. Chad, you're a minister, we're all Christians. Yeah. And I wanted to ask you, the two teams that played shortly after this incident event broke a couple weeks after, they decided to get together and pray in Nebraska. In a and, well, mm -hmm, They oh. decided to pray in a group prayer together before the game. It was quite a scene. It was they got together, they gathered on the field, mm -hmm. and the crowd in, a, in front of a packed stadium of over 60, 70,000 college students um, witnessed this prayer that was given with both teams coming together and they went through all the proper channels to make sure both schools were okay with it all the upper level officials agreed with it and even the you know the the, the deans of these organizations was it for the victims well it was for the victims and that healing could take place so the victims for, were for the, the victims coaches, were yeah. prayed for and the cultures of both teams it was okay. so you know what do you guys feel about that coming together in prayer is that needed more in sporting events or yes. is that Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Not just sporting events, but any. I think type it's of needed in the world that we're living in today. Um, or is it offensive? And I should go all the way back. This, the United States was founded under okay, God. Break yes. it down. Break it that's, down. That's first and foremost. Yes. Mm -hmm. So um, basically, what America is doing, or what some people are doing, have tried to divorce God mm -hmm. from diff from school, from the school system, and stuff like that. Church so, versus state. Yeah, church versus state. When really. This was founded on I God, agree. you I know. Agree. So there's you, no way you can separate from God, but they want to do that because everybody doesn't believe in God. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is, by them doing this, this to me is opening up a, a not a can of worms, but it's opening up to say that it's okay to do it. And so maybe a, a lot, a lot of other schools will follow the protocol See, and begin to pray. That. Jesus taught in the New Testament uh, when he was teaching his disciples how to pray, and that's when we see the model prayer, um, our Father which art in heaven. He was speaking how, uh, and he actually commanded rather, to not pray repetitiously, don't pray in vain. Uh, pray to your Father that he will hear, of course, praying the word of God, and he, he commanded, don't do it as the heathens do. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that in a good sense, it is good for them, because once you start doing something uh, repetitiously, it will then become a habit, and maybe that'll tie some emotion to it and become a part right. of you. Yeah. But 
if you're only praying with no relationship because that's what we believe in mm -hmm. our belief is that you pray to a god that you know yes. and when you pray you pray his word for him to answer on his word you know his scripture and so i believe that it's good for them to come together in unity sometimes things happen god allows for things to happen reason to, to be speaking to yeah, reason together. to be speaking everybody's not a christian so right. um there's going to be muslims there's going to be atheists there's going right. to be agnostic so is it realistic to say that okay when I when we bring a whole team together I'm not offending somebody and because that few or many may be offended um, do you think that such shows shows of uh, it's it's well, unrealistic because we've already had this issue years ago mm -hmm. with different religions coming mm -hmm. together in unity it was a good idea and sometimes we have good ideas you know some things are lawful not expedient we have good ideas we think of things and then end up you know later down the line something happens where somebody is offended or somebody sees a loophole to really exalt their religion or exalt you know their belief system so you agree it won't happen but you think that it should no happen. i believe that it it's liable to happen you know if if they that's what i'm saying if it's if it's us coming together in one belief and and, and everybody has a the same perspective on prayer and why we're praying and to who we're praying to. But see, that's not that's not realistic. But that's not it? taking place. And so, you know, for them to say that we're going to pray, you know, I believe that it was just someone having a good idea and may have been a Christian who just had a good idea. It showed that they can still get along and we can still pray about this issue instead of us fighting and not getting along while we, this is your opinion and this is your opinion. I think you did. I think you did. Well, let's pray in unity about this situation and hopefully that, you know, things will evolve and go the way they're supposed to the people convicted will come you know God, like so God said vengeance is his right. so by praying they're asking for help whether you have people on the field that didn't believe whether you have people in the stands that didn't believe the point they is it was done yeah. so if yes. you're there then you're going to get some of it yeah, too you know, Jerry Sadusky above his garage has a scripture up there that makes people believe that he is Christian it is a scripture out of the Bible so that wasn't working too well for Jerry Sadusky <laughs> Because he was lying. Is he really? He was heart? lying. If you, you really didn't believe that and you really didn't feel that, then God exposed him. You lying. I know you not. Get away from me. Okay. I'm going to give everybody 30 seconds to do their final thought, and then we're going to close okay. here. Um, I'm going to start with no, Keisha. And Keisha, <laughs> I want you to tell us a little bit about how you feel Joseph, Joe Paterno's legacy should be left at Penn State University, and tell us about what overall what do you hope that everybody can gain and learn from this situation. As far as what I have to say, with this being brought to the forefront, I'm hoping and praying that this um, would uh, bring more acknowledgement to what happens. I think that this, um, that they should get better laws. Um, they should require a little bit more uh, extensive background checks and a little bit more um, background on the people that they let come in to volunteer for these nonprofit organizations or even these organizations for these little boys. Bishop Eddie Long, I'm going to quote him. He said, integrity is precious because once you lose it, you can't get it back. So I think it's a caution to all of us in leadership especially people that are in places of influence to stay above reproach mm -hmm. because your character will determine what people remember of you. No matter how much great you've done, um, my brother said it earlier, let not your good works be evil spoken of. Overall, what this case should bring forth is that people need to be accountable for their actions. Yes, exactly. And um, I, I'm, I'm speaking to people out there that are children, if someone's messing with you, or if parents, if they're hiding something, or people that are just in bureaucracy and they're covering up stuff that should not be covered up at the at the count of these innocent people, then something like that needs to be addressed and it needs to be taken care of. So I think that if we're gonna, anything that we're gonna get out of this, people need to start uh, acknowledging the wrong and if you're wrong you need to stop it yes. Amen. Chuck? my thoughts as it relates to Joe Paterno is that I believe that he was a great uh, coach I believe he did his job well I think this situation will help us all remember that morality is way more imperative 
than the job that we do. Mm -hmm. um, and it should cause us to be more observant with the total picture, um, not just on the field, not just how well the students play, but to make sure all areas are covered as it relates to our business and us being accountable to things that are going on around us. I also believe that it's going to help uh, a percentage of our nation learn how not to compromise and not to give in for whatever reason um, and to really stay firm in our faith and I believe in our morality in life. I want to thank everybody again for joining us on The Gospel View and we're going to be back for season three. As you can see we have a very enlightening panel so it's going to be a very exciting <laughs> season three. I'm looking forward to having everybody join us and we'll see you back next episode with The Gospel View. Thank you for joining us.